I have some PCBs here which I've had made by PCBWay at no cost, so thank you very much PCBWay for sponsoring me this video and providing these boards. These are for a project I've been working on for the past month. I've got prototypes over here. So this is actually one module of four units. So there's actually three boards which I've got to make. This is some of the module setup. So this is obviously the prototype setup. So this particular board here, this is a LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway module. All right, you can see on the top of the board there. So I designed this to be a LoRa to Wi-Fi gateway. It uses an ESP32, and here is my prototype up here at the top of this board. So here's the ESP32 here. There's one of the LoRa modules, which it's currently using. And here is a little SD1306.96 inch display. All right, so this setup here, that section, that's what's going to be going onto these boards, except it's going to be two lower modules, it's going to be two channel, not one channel. It's also got like a power supply going to be on there and that kind of thing too. So I thought I'd show you the before and what it's going to be in the end. Okay, so let's open these up and actually have a close look at them, which I think my random knife is going to let me down. Let's actually use a real knife this time, shall we? Let's have a close look. So here you go, that's the bottom of the board, and that's the top. So you can see I've done a lot of like a lot of stitching around the Wi-Fi port. So that's where the Wi-Fi antenna is on the USB32. So I've left that with no fill. All right, so there's no copper through there. You can probably see the light coming through it. That this means the Wi-Fi's got a chance to get through the ball and that sort of stuff. There's no reflection from it. That kind of thing. I mean that's spaced away a little bit anyway. It's going to be off the board by I don't know, a centimetre or so anyway, but I've done that anyway just to help it. Obviously the stitching around the outside there stops the Wi-Fi signals from going in between to try and reduce noise on the signal lines. That's the idea anyway. Whether it does anything or not, I really don't know. We'll try it. Up here you can see I've got a DC to DC converter. So it will output 5 volts, which goes to the micro SD card, which is here. Micro SD on the top. And the display on the bottom. Uh, that also feeds the ESP32 power inline and the LoRa modules. So LoRa's run off 5 volts. You can see there's a 5 volt rail coming across here. I've got these big caps on here. Another one over here, just you know, near, near the actual modules, so try and smooth the power supplies out as they're actually operating because they've put out pulses quite rapidly. So I'm trying to allow for any noise in the lines. And then it comes across here and runs the ESP32, which has got 3.3 volts coming out, which runs the display module. It's fairly simple. We've got FTDI connections here and here, one for each of the lower modules. So I can just plug into this with a connector, just plug an FTDI board in and um, change the jumper settings on here to allow me to program it and um, I can then program it in circuit without having to take them out just make it a little bit easier the programming could be like the ball rates or the data speeds that kind of thing or even the channel it's on you can do it with an ESP32 if you wire up the control pins like the programming pins on here you can actually connect this to an ESP32 and then you can have this change the states of those pins and you can then program it with the ESP32 if you know what all the codes are that's easy enough but I haven't gone that way because I had a limited number of inputs and outputs on this ESP32. So this one probably wasn't so bad, but on my main module, I've been a bit more careful with it. So anyway, so I'm just having a quick look over it to make sure it's all okay and I haven't made any stupid mistakes. <laughs> on the very first revision of this board, the first time I actually sent it to them, I actually made a dumb mistake and luckily I caught it in time. This trace here, that one comes down to pin two, somehow it ended up coming across pin one. It cut right across and then come down. I'm not quite sure how that happened, maybe I moved the connector or something, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but luckily I caught it in time and managed to get that fixed. That would have been a bit of a disaster. So this footprint for the ESP32 here, that I found online, and I did find there were some errors on it, there were some mistakes. It cost me about an hour trying to fix it, because it screwed up the design, I had to basically redo some parts again. It's a bit of a pain. So I'm, I fixed the errors with that footprint, basically copied it, fixed the errors, and put it back. So hopefully the rest of the footprint's okay. What I had was some connection issues, if I remember which pins it was on. I think it was down here somewhere, 26, 27, and 13, and 12, or ground or something like this. These pins down here had some problems anyway. There are two pins with the same numbers. Pin 28, pin 29, were both called 28. I think it's 25 and 26, both called 25, or something like that. I can't remember exactly. I fixed those. So at least my own boards now will have the correct thing on here so the routings don't get... Because I was wondering why I did the routing, it linked the two pins together all the time. It's like, well, that's, why is it doing that? It's because the footprint was bad. Also, I added these holes in the footprint as well to be roughly where the holes should be on the actual board. So, if I need to screw it down, I, I can do. Obviously, the board is actually overhangs here. The board is longer, so it overhangs the end. That's intentional. It means that the USB port should be on the side, protruding slightly, so that if I want to, I can mount it on the side of the box and have the, the plug just come through a hole on the side and actually 
not have to reach a long way into the box. That's the reason I did that. Right, so I'm getting everything together to make this board. So I'm going to use my silver solder, SN62 it's called. You can use that because it's a decent quality solder for this. I want it to last really well. I've got one of these little voltage regulators here which should fit on the board. I haven't checked it yet, should actually make sure it's going to fit. And it's different. Oh, look at that, they lied. That footprint doesn't match. Hmm. Well, there's the first trouble. It's only mine, I can always mount this somewhere else. Interesting, it's supposed to be the right part. LM2596, LM2596. It's the right board. It's scaled. It's not the right dimensions. It's not the right width or the right length. Well, that's really helpful, isn't it? This footprint was online. But that's okay, I can work around that. I wasn't too worried about having that on the board anyway, it would have been nice, but it didn't matter that much. I've got some headers here to go into here, to those double ones, dual, dual headers. I've got some single line headers to go into these ones. And I've got some female headers to go into those ones. And to go into here as well, most likely. I forgot what I'm going to do about this micro SD card, because it's um, an angled fitting. Do I need to get an SD card? Hmm, I think I put them away. I should get one out. Actually, is this using an SD card? No. I built it on there, but I'm not actually using it, so I'm not too worried about that. Actually, right now, I can always add it later on. And these ones will go in those as well for the lower modules and also for the display on the other side. So that'd be one of the last things to do. So the first thing I'm going to actually put on the board is going to be all these little surface mount components, all these little resistors and capacitors. Get those out of the way, get the tricky ones done, and um, we'll go from there. Okay, let's start off. So I've got the capacitors first. I did originally think sort of 100 nanofarad caps, which go here, here, and here, and there. But that was just a guess, it's like, uh, I think I'll just use some 68s because I've got some big caps next to them as well. They work fine without any of these um, bypass caps anyway. The whole design when I was working on it was fine without them, didn't have any problems, so I'm probably going to be overkill anyway. So I'm going to put some 68s on here, and so it's got these other capacitors across those anyway. So let's get some of these out. Unfortunately, I've got a bit of a sore throat coming on, so my voice is going a little bit. Three of those, is it? One, two, three, four, four of those. Oh, one didn't come out. So what I'm going to do is just use one of these little flux pins, these little cheap ass Chinese ones, and they work. A bit of flux on those, just to help them a little bit. I mean, these are brand new balls, so they shouldn't actually be too bad for residue you anyway. And what I'll do is I'll just put some solder on each pad, or one of the pads, and I can get things positioned. Just turn my stretcher on. Now I've got one pad done, I should be able to, uh, oh, this one, this that one up there. It allows me to get a resistor, or in this case a capacitor, and a stick on there. I mean, I could use hot air for this, but this is just a nice, quick, easy way of doing it. Works just fine. I haven't got many to do, so it's not like it's a big or anything to get this done. I've lost one already. I definitely got four out. Oh, there it is. Now, if we really had to, I could get the microscope out, but I don't need the microscope for this. Though you'd probably benefit from it though. You'll see a bit more. Okay, so that's that side done. Now I'll do the other side. And the first side again. There's not many service mount parts on this, so it's pretty easy to do this. Done. That's the capacitors. Okay, so now we do the resistors. So I've got to do four resistors on here. Of course, now you're going to be upside down, aren't they? You know, I'll do the same thing with these. 
the flux on those pins or those pads and prepare them with the soldering iron. If I was being particularly fussy, I'd make sure that um, I had the numbers all the same way around. I'm not going to be that fussy. I will make sure they're right way up there. Uh, I've got to try and make sure I don't block the shot with the soldering iron. Side up. Take. Trying to get the soldering on the way. So if I was using hot air, I could do this a bit differently, but um, sometimes it's easier just to do it by hand like that than using hot air. I mean, good enough. Good enough. Alright, so that's the service mount parts on there, and now it's got the traditional parts to do. Okay, so to get these headers lined up, what I'm going to do is put them onto the module first, and then I can pop them in. That way, I know they're definitely in line with the module. It's all nice and straight. I'll just push it down and flip it over. And it's all pressed onto there. I'll just tack some of these pins down and that'll be alright. So let's get some flux on here. Actually, what I might do is do both sides of the ball. Let it flow through a bit easier. It's pretty easy, really. Now make sure the ESP32 is in the right around. Uh, it doesn't really matter because you can unplug it and plug it back in the right way. So there you go. It's going to sit that way up. And let's tack these pins down. Okay. I should hold it. I'm going to take the ESP32 back off and then uh, solder up nicely. Okay, there we go. That's those headers on there. I won't clean the board up until I've actually finished. I might have even, I'm actually tempted I might have an ultrasonic it. I do have an ultrasonic cleaner. Right, so that's that one on. Now I'll do the other headers. I'll get the other headers in and I'll do those other components. It's just easier to do the headers first things like just flatten it and stand it up like that. It's just easier that way. Right, you can see I've cut up these other headers here. I've got these other ones ready to go. So I've got some, I've got uh, two sixes, two sevens, and a four. That's a snuff cut. So that's with the female headers. Although I'm not sure I'm going to do about this micro SD card yet because that's a bit of a funny one because it's got like a. They often come with a right angle fitting anyway. So I might look at maybe an right angle fitting on here or I'm not quite sure. You're going to have to look into that one. I might actually change it to be a male fitting or something. I'm not quite sure. So um, yeah, I'll wait a bit later. Let's get these other ones on. I won't spoil you with that too much. All right, so I've got that one pushed through. It's just sitting on the ball, so it's balancing on it, and it's just holding it straight for me, which is why I didn't put any other components on first. I just wanted the headers first. It just makes it a lot easier this way. Let's get it soldered on. Let's get one pin done. Okay. 
which is a flowing, I might have to get some bit of flux out of So here we go. Alright, that's one pin. That's definitely not straight. Okay, now it's straight. And so the rest. Into the first one because I wasn't happy with that. That's that one done. Now I'll do that for the rest of the headers and that'll be those done. I'm not going to bore you with that. Okay, that's sort of female headers on. Well, apart from the LCD, I'm going to put that one after because it's going to be going to keep it hard to work on if it's wobbling. So I'll chuck that one after. So uh, we'll now do the male headers. Okay, we're nearly there. Now I've got to put some individual headers on too. So I've got to put a, a row of males on there and on there and a couple of pin headers here. A double one there, a double one there, and then that's all the mostly the headers done apart from the micro SD and the other one. I think about this micro SD, I might not use it. I wasn't planning on using it. Right, so that's all the headers on there, even the one there. The micro SD, I'm not even sure I'm going to use it. I might, I might not. It doesn't really require logging, so I'm unsure if I'll actually implement it or not. I probably will, but I'm just unsure. So that's that far. Now I've got to put the capacitors on. Sorry about the noise, I had to turn the air conditioning on, it's getting too hot. Well, I've placed the capacitors on the ball, just got to solder those on. Okay, next thing I'm going to do, now I've got the capacitors soldered in there. Before I put anything critical on the ball, I'm going to test it. So I'm going to, I've got it hooked up to my power supply, haven't turned it on yet, so I'm going to stick the multimeter on there and we'll check to make sure we've got 5 volts coming out in the places we're supposed to have it and not anywhere where it's not supposed to be just in case I made some stupid mistake it's entirely possible so I'll we'll stick in the ground pin first convenient header and we'll turn the power on and see what happens ok, current draw is really low so that's looking alright so let's check over here, there should be 5 volts just there it is, there we go, 5 volts exactly, perfect so let's check these pins so I think 5 volts should be this pin here, it is and that one there, it is, and over here, ten pin two are there. Yep, that's the five volt positions. Um, yeah, I think there's any five volts on here. Yeah, those are three volt rail stuff. So there's nothing on there. I don't think. I could be wrong. I'm trying to. Pin three. Oh, pin 3 the FTDIs, that's right. VCC pin of FTDIs, 5 volts as well. So, that's fine. So that's all correct. Let's just have a look, make sure there's nothing where it shouldn't be. You get 5 volts going to an ESP32, going to destroy it. So, only the VIN should be the one which has it. Nothing else. Cool. That's all as it should be. Yep, I'm happy with that. So the 5 volt power supply looks like it's going to be alright. At least the, the rail configuration is correct. Nothing wrong at least. Yeah. So I might as well populate the rest of it and uh, see what we go. So a Laura module here. I've got two Laura modules to put on. So this is going to be Laura number 2. So I'll plug into there. Like that. These will be mounted on a the casing so that will be supported this end with that stud in the end. Here is the LCD, I'll put that in a minute. ESP32. This one's already programmed, this is the one I was using with it on the test board. So um, we'll plug that in. Oh, the power supply still turn it off. It's not good. That's there. I need to set the header pins up here. I need to go and get some jumpers. Okay so I've got the jumper pins in there. Got two sets. So the left hand side should be for programming the modules and the right hand side for, should be for serial communication between the module and the SP32. So what I'll just quickly do is check for continuity between the module and the serial connection. So I don't remember which pins they are. It's these ones here somewhere. Uh, 
exactly what mode would be helpful. Sounder. Now be able to hear it. it. Makes more sense, doesn't it? Okay, so it's that one there. Is it that one or that one? That one there, I think it's the other one. Yep, that's that pin there, so that's okay. No shorts. No. And we'll do the same on this module here. So that pin there is which one? I don't remember. And two. And pin four. Okay. Pin two and pin four on there. Right. So those are alright. That's working correctly. Okay, so next thing I want to do before I put the display on there is power it back up again to 5 volts and check make sure we get 3.3 volts coming out of the ESP32 and I'm getting 3.3 volts over here at the display connector. Power it on, it's drawing about 50 milliamps, 130 milliamps, back down to 50 again. That sounds about right. So it's connect what I would have done is connected to Wi Fi and got the current time. So that's working at least. So it's just took it on the ground point, just there, and we'll check 3.3 volts. Get the sleeve up. Yep, 3.263, slightly low. And it's over here somewhere. We got 3.3 volts there. So that's fine, and that should be the ground. Just there, should be backwards. Yep, that's fine. So that's all working alright. Nothing wrong so far. Nothing getting hot. Looking promising. Might actually work. Okay, I've plugged in the display. It's kind of a line. It's kind of lined up. I think I got my connection slightly wonky. <laughs> it doesn't matter much. I'll fix it. All right, let's see if it works. Yeah, look at that. Display's working. Excellent. You can see flicker on the camera, but I can't see flicker on here. So, yep, working. She's going. So that's sort of connecting through Wi Fi as well. So it's got Wi Fi and LoRa both functioning. So, at least it should be both functioning. I can actually test it. I'm going to turn one of the other devices on and see if it communicates with the server. That'll prove it's working or not. Right, that's powering it up again. I've got my other device turned on. So, in a second, I'll try sending some data over it. And then I should actually, then you'll see this display come up saying it's sent something. So let's give it a go. Okay, I had a bit of a hiccup. I discovered I had actually accidentally mapped two pins incorrectly. So the serial pins, which are supposed to be on pins 16, 17, I actually put them onto 2 and 4. For some reason, I did that later. I don't know why I did that. I must have had it in my head that those were the pins, and that's what I used for the UART. Anyway, um, thankfully, the ESP32, you can remap all the pins. So what I've done is go into the firmware and remapped the serial connections for the UART to the pins I actually end up using, not the pins that are default. So I'll show you on here what I mean. So just here you've got RX2 and TX2. Those are the pins I was wanting to use, but for some reason I mapped it onto those two. So I've just um, that's what I've ended up connecting to is those two there, which is wrong. A bit inconvenient, but not a big disaster. So what I've done is I've just change the software. As I say, I've just gone into the firmware and in the Arduino IDE I've specified these two pins here are the UART and uh, that's now working. So I can demonstrate that for you now. Okay, let's pair it up again. And I've tried both sockets to make sure that both work. So I can plug that same lower module into either position and it'll work in either one. So I know they all work. That's great. So we'll try this again. Send it some data, and there we go. It's received the data from Laura, sent it to Wi Fi over to the website. The website has sent a response back, and the other module has received a response on the website. So, this is all working correctly. Excellent. That's all good. So, there's a position here for a second module. It's a real shame that this, this power supply didn't just sit on there like it's supposed to. I mean, that was designed, it's supposed to just go on there. 
I mean, I might be able to make it fit. I can probably, I mean, it's close enough to probably run some long leads, like um, component leads. You know, like the ones I've cut off the capacitors, for example, these things. Could probably just run those through and just stand it off a little bit to make it all line up. I mean, that, that's doable. I think I'd probably be fairly happy with that. Actually, I might just do that. I mean, it's close enough. I won't be able to get both the mounting holes lined up. I only better get one of them lined up, but I think with my mounting hole and the four wires, it should be fine anyway. I mean, it's not that heavy a module. It's not really going to be impacted, you know, shaking or anything like that. So it's it's a fairly static device. So I'm not too worried about vibration affecting it. So I might just be able to do that. So before mounting this on the board, obviously I want to make sure that it's outputting the correct voltages. Now I've already set this up. I'm going to tell you now. I've already done this in case I forgot in the heat of doing the video. But I'm going to show you anyway. So you, I've got some little clip leads here, crocodile clips. So I'm going to stick those on the input side, like that. And there's the output side, I'm going to stick the probes in. And I've got these nice little needle probes, so they're really handy for this sort of thing. And I shall get the meter going. So DC volts, that's fine. Now I'm currently outputting 5 volts, so you'll see this won't actually do the right voltage. That's the drop off, it's about half a volt. So about 0.6 volts or so is the drop off. So that's how much it has to be up by at least. So if we want to get for 5 volts out of this, you probably want 6 volts minimum, which is perfect for using on two um, lithium ion batteries. All right, so put a couple of those in series, they might drop down to sort of 3 volts at worst case, which gives you 6 volts. So when they're dead flat, that's the dropout voltage for this regular. So it works out beautifully, it lines up quite nicely. So this just increases voltage. So 6 volts is giving me 4.9. I set it to 4.9 volts because I don't like to run things to the max. And I know that the um, lower modules, they say the maximum is 5.2. Anything over 5.2 could damage them. But they can run at 5. They're designed to run at 5 volts, so it's fine. But I think, well, if I just go slightly below that, I mean, I work at 3.3 volts as well. But um, if I do 4.9 volts instead, then I'm a bit more comfortable with that. What's that? That and the SD card as well. The SD cards, if I actually even bother implementing that on this device, I may or may not do it. They actually have a built-in voltage regulator, so they're actually a 5 volt supply, but they drop down to 3.3 volts on the ball. So as long as you've got enough headroom, like 4 volts or so, then it's going to be fine. So that'll work fine. So I'm, I'm any, anything above 4 volts will be alright. So I'm just going to set a 4.9, I'll be happy with that. And if you look over here, you can see the quiescent current, kind of say, quiescent current it's 5 milliamps to run that regulator circuit. So that's fairly efficient. It's probably more efficient than a linear regulator, which is why I wanted to use one of these modules. So thanks again, PCBWay, for sponsoring the video and providing these circuit boards for me free of charge. So make sure you go and check out PCBWay and go visit their site. And if you're interested in circuit boards, um, certainly do consider going there. Um, I've used various companies in the past, and PCBWay I've never had a problem with. It's always been really good. I've always been very happy with the service. And that's not just for me getting sponsored ones, it's even ones I've purchased myself in the past without being sponsored. So I've seen both sides of it there, obviously sponsored tends to get a bit of preferential treatment, you know, you expect that. But even as a normal customer, I've had no problems with PCB work. So I highly recommend going there and using their services. They've also got a really good Gerber viewer now, um, so you know, I'll probably do some video on that as well, maybe show you that. board works well, apart from one little mistake that I had made. Otherwise it's good, so I'm happy with that. That's ball one of three. More to come. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, click the bell icon, and all that sort of stuff. If you've got any questions about the module, how this works, chuck it down in the comments. And thanks for watching to the end. Watching to the end helps me to get a better stats on the channel, and YouTube thinks I'm better than I am. I don't know, something like that. Catch you later. Bye.